Located in the northeast of England in Ingemel Skegness, Fantasy Island hosting multiple roller coasters and three permanent coasters, with one arguably being the smoothest Vekoma in the world, multiple dark rides and a fantastic indoor section. Is Fantasy Island the most underrated park in the UK? Firstly, I'd like to point out that yes, I'm aware Fantasy Island is an amusement park, not a theme park, but most people refer to every park as a theme park and Fantasy Island, in my opinion, deserves as much attention as possible. So opening in 1995, just off the northeast coast in Ingemel's, Fantasy Island was born. Just four years later, the park opened their first major coaster called Millennium, which is largely regarded as one of the smoothest Vekoma roller coasters. Ironically though, the park opened this coaster one year before the actual Millennium in 1999. Just three years later in 2002, the park opened the Odyssey, which is currently the tallest SLC in the world, costing £28 million to build, making it the most expensive coaster ever built in the UK. Standing at an impressive 167 foot tall, with a max speed of 62 miles per hour, the Odyssey is currently the fourth tallest coaster in the UK, behind Hyperia, the big one, and Stealth. The park isn't shy from its height either, as Millennium is the fifth tallest coaster in the UK at 150 foot, beating the likes of the Swarm and the Wave. Now there is one more coaster which is permanent and did open with the park in 1995, called Rumbus Rocket, which still operates to the day and has received regular freshen ups and maintenance, including it way back in 2007 the train, the station and the track were all changed, and recently in 2019 the train design was changed along with updates to the station. This is just one of several investments the Mellors Group, who currently own the park, have made in their time owning the park. As although things so far have seemed very rosy, it's not always been that way, and in August 2014, Fantasy Island did announce it had entered administration. The park continued to operate during this time and was later acquired by the Mellors Group themselves in 2016. And it didn't take long for improvements to be noticeable at the park with the reinstallation of G-Force, which had previously operated at the park from 2002 to 2003. And in February 2016, they also repainted the Odyssey and did a fantastic job. Just two years later, they had also repainted the Millennium, meaning in just two years of ownership, both the major coasters had undergone much needed repaints. However, the best investment the Mellows Group have done is inside the pyramid, and this is where the park rivals some of the theme parks in the UK. Costing £3 million in 2017, the park opened its completely redone pyramid, blacking out the inside of the pyramid to not let any natural light through. It created a far more immersive experience with projection mapping, music, and more. A multi-story themed mini course was also installed which does come included with your park tickets and an American style bowling alley and so much more. It was the most investment Fantasy Island had seen in nearly two decades and it was hugely popular and still is. The park also hosts many family aimed shows as well as fireworks throughout the summer and during Fit Island which is one of the best events in the calendar in my opinion and also one of the best Halloween events in the UK. The park during Halloween has some of the best and most underrated mazes and spooks in the UK with fantastic humour, fear and theming. The park even has family mazes to aim at a younger audience which are just as good even if you're a bit older. There is just so much for you to go and see at Fantasy Island with two indoor rides to just Sea Aquarium and also two contours. Sea Aquarium has one of the best soundtracks in the UK when it comes to themed water rides. <laughs> Partner up with two contours, which also has a great soundtrack and great theming, including when they re-themed it for Halloween last year, just showing the innovation the park has to try and bring, bring customers in. We've not even talked about the flat ride offering, which the park regularly switches up, as it's an amusement park after all. Although with some of its theming, you wouldn't really know it's an amusement park. Now standing at 183 foot tall, the park also has a very impressive shock towers, which on some days you may be lucky and get shot up twice, especially if it's quieter. Now you might think for all of this, you'd have to pay a lot, but honestly, that isn't the case. The park offers some of the best ticket price in the country and no, this is not a paid promotion. I'm just really passionate about this park. If you don't wish to buy a full wristband, you can even pay per ride, which is another bonus for it being an amusement park, 
and you do not have to pay to walk around or inside the pyramid. You can also buy the golf course and also the bowling separately if you do wish just to do that. The park contains a market as well which you can walk around even off season as it is Europe's largest seven day market containing over 320 stores with a wide range of products. Event prices for the likes of Fair Iron as well are competitive especially when you're considering the work they put in and they actively change the mazes from year to year unlike some of the other parks in the UK. Ticket prices do vary on time of the season from different coloured days and if you are interested in visiting I will leave a link in the description. The last major talking point is how good the park hours are. Throughout the summer you can even see rides operating until 10pm at night and 9pm during Fear Island. They do close outdoor rides earlier than indoors but even with that there's still super long operating hours especially for large amounts of the year. What's great about this though is the Millennium's queue line is actually inside the pyramid so although most outdoor rides would close Millennium doesn't because its queue line is inside. This means you can go and ride that coaster until 10pm at night on some days. Overall, to conclude, Fantasy Island is a park everyone should visit at least once and you won't be disappointed. With consistent investment, innovation, really excited to see what Fantasy Island does over the next few years. And if you did enjoy today's video, please hit that subscribe button and let me know your thoughts on Fantasy Island if you have visited in the past.